it going folks? Taylor Lukowski here. In today's video, I got a question from a foster who seems to be having an issue with her dog resource guarding. Her new foster has been progressively getting worse and worse about resource guarding when around their bull. Now, it's important to understand that resource guarding uh, stems from fear. The dog is protecting something they believe is theirs and they're afraid that it may not come back again. Now, this dog in particular happens to growl when you just put your foot near the bowl. Um, it growls, it shows its teeth, and I think at one point or another he also peed. He urinated on himself. So that means he is very, very fearful and he really doesn't mean to cause conflict. He just doesn't know what else to do. Good boy! <laughs> so I have Adonis here. He's going to help me to show you what to do. How I generally help dogs who resource guard. It's important to understand you never ever correct this behavior. You do not punish it. You don't get mad at the dog. You don't try to seize him on it. You don't do any of that. Um, good boy. So say I have Say Adonis here is a resource guarder. Um, if you can sit next to their bull and they don't care at all, perfect, start there. Sitting is a little bit less intimidating than standing over the dog. If you're afraid to do that, then maybe try sitting a few feet away. Um, so there's no uh, you know, scary action. The dog may try to react or, or bite at you or snap at you. Now, chances are the dog is not going to try to make full contact with you. They may just uh, charge you or mock charge you or snap at you just to tell you, hey, leave me alone. I'm nervous, I'm protecting my bull. We want to teach the dog that there's nothing wrong with me being by your bull. In fact, good things happen. So most of the time, dogs will not protect an empty bull, so you can start with that. So I have his empty bull here. Um, now Adonis does not resource guard any bit with me. Um, since he was a pup, I raised him, um, you know, to think that that's good. Uh, this foster has not done anything negative towards this foster dog to make them want to protect their food, just so you all know. Um, sometimes that just happens, especially with a dog who's been in a shelter environment things can happen. So I have some treats right here with me. Um, you know, some cat treats. He loves these as a little, little higher value treat. Um, so I would start, you know, here's an empty bowl. Uh, you can have the bowl a few feet away from you. The dog sees there's nothing in it. You can drop a treat in there. Perfect. Good boy. He comes back to me looking for more food. Perfect. I can go over and drop another piece in his bowl and move away. Now, I talk a lot about pressure and release. Um, and this is, is important to understand along with resource guarding because this is pressure. Putting this bowl is, is the, the, this bowl here is what he wants to protect. This is his draw. Um, so by me coming towards it may make him want to become more aggressive in a way to protect it. So this is a draw. Um, I'm putting pressure by touching it. Um, so you don't want to leave too much pressure. So if I drop that treat, I want to move away right away, especially when the dog comes into the bowl. Um, I want that dog to understand that I'll leave your bowl alone and you got something good out of it. Um, there's one piece of food at a time, so he's not sitting there getting really into his food bowl. It tells him he's a good boy for moving away from the bowl and not reacting when I'm by the bowl. So I toss it, I leave it alone. So this is pressure and this is release. You want to make sure to give your pet and your animal you're working with plenty of release of that pressure because again, think of it as a balloon. You're filling it up with air. You overfill it, it pops, that would be a dog reacting. A dog may snap or bite or growl, um, which means that we've missed the opportunity to prevent that uh, behavior. We've actually caused that behavior. Um, remember, animals are very easy to teach, unteach, and reteach. So if we come over here, we put pressure, we take that air out of that balloon before it pops, balloon doesn't pop, balloon doesn't learn a bad lesson. Basically waiting for the dog to start looking to you. They see you as a source of food, which is a positive thing, um, the only thing that really overcomes fear with animals is food. Food always overcomes fear, uh, depending on the situation, depending on the, uh, the value of the treat. Um, depends on how quickly the animal will, uh, you know, recover from that fearful situation. Um, you know, if there's too much pressure going on, say there was, uh, you know, we were outside, there's lots of distractions, or there's a lot of animals in here, or a lot of people around here, Adonis may not feel so comfortable to take some food. So that just tells us, okay, there's too much pressure going on. <laughs> Good boy. It just tells us there's too much pressure going on. We need to back up a little bit, go behind threshold. So say we have a dog that growls at me just for sitting right next to his bull. Okay, no problem. I'm not going to look at him. I'm not going to correct him or her. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to move a little bit further away. If they stop growling, great, then I can start tossing a treat their way. I don't have to put it in the bowl right away, I can just toss it in their general area. If you're by the bowl and they start growling at you, a lot of times I'll take a treat and I'll just toss it away from the bowl. So the dog learns that leaving the bowl is actually something good. Um, you can do that and then put some food in and then you can move away. 
the dog comes and gets the food, then you can toss a treat away or a piece of food away so the dog leaves the bowl, you come in, you put a little bit more food, you move away. So you're putting pressure and release, you're teaching the dog to give release, pressure and release, they come in, they move away. Um, whatever you feel comfortable with doing, uh, don't work too fast, this is something that can definitely take a bit of time. Um, if you put your food down, the dog kind of starts to hover, okay, no problem. Take a step back and just chill, relax. So say we have a dog that's not too bad with me sitting here while they're eating. So say you're sitting here with the food in your lap. Say you have a little cup of food and you happen to be sitting and you're giving the dog some food in their bowl. If they happen to come into your space and start eating out of your cup, uh, don't panic. You can take a treat and just move it away from yourself and stand up. Or if the dog starts to get into your cup and then starts becoming protective that way, you can just set the food down, move away and stand up. You know, slide away and stand up. And then next time we'll try it from standing position. Um, a lot of times it's very helpful to have it on the counter. So you have your cup of food on the counter. You put some in the dog's bowl, they eat it, they either look at you and they get more food or they look at you and you can toss a piece of food away and they move away before you put more food in the bowl. If you're worried about your dog protecting the general area around their bowl, start by picking up the bowl and keeping it out of the dog's general area. Uh, put it on the counter, put it in the cabinet, in the fridge, wherever. Make sure it's not on the ground unless it's feeding time. The only time they get this bowl is around feeding time, so it prevents more times that the dog will have the opportunity to protect this space. They have that draw of protecting this bowl. Um, so you remove that draw, you, you make it easier for you know, the dog to not have the need to correct or protect anything. If you're really nervous about your dog protecting its bowl at all, then start with it on the counter. You put some food in, you put it on the ground, the dog eats, you can take a piece of food, toss it away from yourself. When they go get that food, you can pick the bowl back up, put a few more treats in there. Uh, and continue that until you feel more comfortable to be able to put food in and put the bowl back down while the dog is still here. Once you're at that stage where you can start putting more food in, little handfuls at a time, once you've gotten more comfortable being able to stand around your dog and put food in their bowl and your dog is more comfortable, then you can start by standing around and giving more and more food and maybe possibly try kneeling down, sitting down and feeding your dog that way. Just getting them used to having one general person in their space and teach the dog that it's totally okay if they want they can come get food out of your hand make sure there are no other animals or other people generally around when you're practicing this because again you're creating a draw here if there's multiple predators uh, or multiple animals around meaning you know dogs or a dog and cat or dogs and cats and ferrets and whatever else are around um, they're going to want to come towards this and make it more of a competitive uh, activity the dog will feel more likely the need to protect this bull than if it was just themselves and the owner, the foster, whomever it is. If you're still nervous about that, you can try practicing this with a properly fitted, conditioned basket muzzle. Now the point about the basket muzzle is that it keeps the dog safe, it keeps you safe, um, you don't get bitten. It also has an opening under the mouth so they can actually get food and treats. So you can try practicing that where you put some food either in your hand and give it to them straight in the mouth or you can put it in the bowl, they can go eat it. I prefer the basket muzzle over your typical nylon veterinary muzzle because that whole front opening of the mouth is open and they can still nip you and it's just way too constrictive. Um, I don't like to feel trapped and I don't want my animal to feel trapped either. And at the very least, you can just let your dog eat alone. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, in the olden days, people used to understand that it's okay if your dog protects their food, just leave them alone. Let them eat in peace, that's fine. But it's also important to teach your animal to accept touching and petting, you know, occasionally uh, while they're eating. So that way they don't uh, have to feel the need to protect their food. Or now again, this is done through generalized and systematic desensitization. In the beginning, we just want the animal to learn that, hey, I can sit here nice and calm. I'm not looking at you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not touching you. And you can eat your food. That's it. It's as simple as that. It takes time to get to that point, so don't rush yourself. Don't try to push too much. If the dog is doing great for two or three days in a row, perfect. If one day uh, you try to push too much, you try to put your hand in their bowl and keep it there, for example, um, and they happen to react, then you work too fast. You put too much pressure. You're trying to teach the dog to accept something too quickly that they're not ready for, and instead you set yourself back a couple of steps. Nothing wrong with that. It teaches you a good lesson, teaches the dog a good lesson, really teaches the dog a bad lesson, but you can learn from that. So if you happen to do that and you work too fast, the dog reacts for whatever reason, then just take it back a step. Go back to kindergarten, as we say in the trainer's world, and make it very simple. Um, 
move further away from the bowl. Start from the beginning, where you keep the bowl up away from the dog, you put a treat in, you put it down, the dog eats the food, you can either move them away while you pick up the bowl, or you can go ahead and put some more food in. Go back a couple of steps to where you know the dog was more comfortable, and work your way back to that point. Now, you may never be able to successfully put your hand in the bowl and move the dog and you know all that sort of stuff, and that's okay. Just so long as you can put the bowl down, you can stand by them, maybe give an occasional pet or so, and leave it at that. The dog shouldn't have to jump through hoops just to be able to eat their food in peace. I mean, people don't have to. If you are still having issues and you're still very fearful about it, then the very last resort I would say would be talk to an animal behaviorist. Behaviorists, true ones that have their PhD and a master's in animal science and psychology, they will be able to help you with a training plan that is bulletproof and they know exactly how to work with the dog to prevent them from blowing up. So that's my video on resource guarding. Um, just a very quick uh, cover of it. I'll try to go into more detail uh, if I can at a later date, you know, with Adonis. We'll try uh, different, you know, sources of treats and food and meat. Um, but this is just to show you the basics of how to get your dog used to you touching their bowl, um, how to prevent resource guarding, and how to work with it in the most simplest form without using corrections, without getting upset, without working too fast. Understand that your animal is just fearful and they're just protecting this bull and getting mad at them is only going to increase that fear. It's telling them you're right to be afraid of me. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me, um, whether a message in the comments or you can leave me an email at uh, on my website at k9tay.com. Um, on there, I do have pictures of uh, dogs who are acting fearful, um, how to read their body calming signals and their stress signals and all that good stuff. Um, so everything there is free, lots of free information there. You can also Google, you know, dogs that are fearful. Um, so look it up, really learn it, get that in your brain so you know exactly what to look for and when to react. When you see a dog showing these stress signals, you need to act very quickly but very calmly and confidently. If you touch the dog and he stiffens, just quickly move away. If you wait too long, it might give the dog the opportunity to react and snap at you because they've been saying, hey, back off. And within that couple of seconds, you don't back off. They say, what are you doing? Back off. So put yourself in their paws, take some time, work with them, understand them, and I hope everything works out for y'all. Again, if you have questions, uh, comments about this, again, feel free to reach out, comment down below, uh, send me an email at k 9 um, and I'd be more than happy to help you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it, and stay positive.